<clears throat> Welcome to the lecture for 9.9 .9, for section 9.9 .9, applications marginals and derivatives for math 1325. Today we're going to look at some word problems and some specific applications from derivatives. The first thing we're going to look at is marginals and what are they? Marginals, by definition, is something situated on the margin, on the edge, something that is only kind of important, or something that represents a small change. For example, an increase in taxes of less than 1% is called, or might be called, a marginal increase in taxes. When we look at these in terms of businesses, a marginal cost is the cost to produce one more item. The marginal revenue is the revenue generated from selling one more item. And the marginal profit is the profit that's generated from selling and um, making one more item. So for example, the marginal cost at 500 is the cost to produce the next item or the 501st item. So how do we find marginals? Since marginals represent an incremental cost, revenue, or profit, notice that what we are seeking is the instantaneous change in the specific function, the instantaneous change when we make another item, when we sell another item, etc. So really what we're looking for is the derivative. Marginal cost is equal to the derivative of the total cost function. Marginal revenue is equal to the derivative of the revenue function. Marginal profit is equal to the derivative of the profit function. Also, marginal profit could be equal to the derivative of the revenue function minus the derivative of the cost function because the profit function is also calculated by revenue minus cost. So the marginal cost at 500 is the marginal cost at 500 in notation, which is the derivative of the total cost function when x equals 500 or the input equals 500. Let's look at an example. If the demand for a product in a monopoly market is given by p equals 16 minus 0.02x, where x is the number of units and p is the price per unit, Find the total revenue function, and then find the marginal revenue at x equals 40. If you want, go ahead and hit pause, try this problem on your own, and then start the recording again when you're ready. Since revenue is all the money earned, this is simply the price, P, times the number of items sold, or x. P times x, we have a formula for P, so we plug that in and then just multiply it by x, and we get 16x minus 0.02x squared. Recall that the marginal revenue equals the derivative of the revenue function, which we just figured out. So taking the derivative of this function, of the revenue function, we get 16 minus 0.04x. Plugging in 40 into this equation, we get 16 minus 0 0.04 times 40, or $14.40. Let's talk about the marginal concept again. From the last problem, we had the following equations and values. The total revenue function we can see here is r of x equals 16x minus 0.02x squared. The marginal revenue function, which means we could calculate this at any value of x, just like the total revenue above, is equal to the derivative of the revenue function, or r prime x, which equals 16 minus 0.04x. The marginal revenue at a specific number of units, in this case 40, equals $14.40. Now we talked about the marginal revenue being the incremental revenue from selling one more item. Notice that this is an estimate from selling one more item. Thus the marginal revenue at x equals 40 estimates that the sale of the 41st item, the next item, will increase revenue by $14.40.
how could we calculate the actual increase in revenue? Not an estimate, but the actual. Well, notice if we took the revenue for 41 items and calculated that amount of revenue, we took the revenue for 40 items and calculated that amount of revenue and subtracted them, we would get the actual increase in revenue from the sale of the 41st item. If we do that, what we end up with is fourteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. So you can see our estimate is pretty right off. It's pretty close to the money, as we say. It's just off by two cents. Now, what the reason we do this is that this gives businesses a good estimate of how things are changing instantaneously, and this may be very important for decision making, and it saves us a lot of calculations doing multiple calculations of this bigger formula. Let's see if we can imagine what this looks like um, visually. Um, and one way we might do that is when we're trying to maximize or, or minimize a system, or specifically what we call that optimizing. Optimizing um, is when you try to get the best results. Usually this involves maximizing something or minimizing something. Maximizing profits, for example, by maybe minimizing costs. Maximizing efficiency, perhaps, if you're some kind of factory, minimizing risk, etc. for downtime. The graph at the right shows a total revenue function. Okay, we can see that it's a parabola, so it has a, a maximum value. Where is the ma revenue maxim maximized and at what value? Well, we remember from earlier in algebra that when we have a parabola, the maximums occur, or the minimums, the optimum values occur um, at the vertex, uh, either at the peak or the valley. Um, and the question is, what is happening to the marginal revenue at or near this value? And remember that marginal revenue is a derivative, and derivatives also represent tangent lines, or specifically, the slopes of tangent lines. So we can see here um, on the left side of the graph, I hope you can see those red tangent line there, here, and here, that um, at about x equals 100 or 200, we can see that we have a positive slope that the function is increasing. Over here on the right at about x equals 600, we can see that the function is decreasing. Our slope of our tangent line would be negative. Since we're going from a positive uh, derivative to a negative derivative, at some point we're going to have to hit zero. And that's actually at the very peak, because remember that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So the marginal revenue is moving from positive to negative and is equal to zero at the max value. This can be very helpful when we're trying to figure out how to optimize systems. What we're going to do is set the derivative equal to zero and find and solve for that input value. Let's look at a practice problem. If the total profit in thousands of dollars is given by P of X, this is formula, 20 times the square root of X plus 1 minus 2X minus 22, what is the marginal profit level at a production level of 15 units? So this is asking us simply to find um, P prime X when X equals 15. Relatively simple. Let's do the take the derivative and notice we have a, um, a chain rule here, an outer function square root, an inner function X plus 1, a square root we can set as a power of 1 half. So the derivative here we get 20, which is the constant in front, times the power 1 half, times the inside function x plus 1, um, raised to a new power, which is 1 less than the 1 half, or 1 half minus 1 half, which is negative 1 half, times the derivative of the inner. The de inner is x plus 1, so the derivative of that is just simply 1, minus the derivative of the next piece, which is 2, minus the derivative of the last piece. Well, the derivative of a constant is 0, so this just goes away. All right. We can simplify that into 10 over the square root of x plus 1 minus 2. However, remember, we want to find this at 15, at x equals 15. So we plug that in. Plugging in 15, we get the value of 1 half. What does a marginal profit of 1 half mean? In any problem, it's important to interpret your results. So let's go back to our problem and look at what this means. The total profit is in thousands of dollars. So 
our marginal profit is also in that same unit, thousands of dollars. So we have a half thousand dollars. Now we don't say that. What is a half of a thousand dollars? Well, of course it's five hundred dollars. This is the correct answer. This is correct mathematically, but it's not correct in terms of interpreting this in relative to the problem that we're given. So if you had put on the test that the marginal profit is one half, I would have marked it wrong. The marginal profit of 15 is $500. This is the money we earn from selling the 16th item. <clears throat> a firm in a competitive market must sell its product for 200 per unit. The cost per unit per month is 80 plus X, where X represents the number of units sold per month. What is the marginal profit function? Notice this profit, excuse me, this problem um, gives you some information about the cost per unit or this, the, uh, excuse me, the price per unit, what it sells for, 200. So we can figure out revenues based upon that. It gives us a cost per unit so we can figure out the total cost function. And if we have the revenue function and the cost function, then we can figure out the profit function and then we can figure out the marginal profit function. So you need to be able to understand how all three of these concepts relate to each other and be able to think through a problem. So let's look first. What would the revenue be equal to? The revenue, this is a very intuitive thing, the revenue is simply the price times the number sold. You get this every time you go to the grocery store. If an apple costs 50 cents and you buy five of them, then the revenue for the grocery store is five times 50 or two dollars and 50 cents. This is no different. So if we are selling something for 200 per unit, then the money that we make is 200 times X because X is the number of units that we're making or selling. The cost function here too, be careful, the cost function is not 80 plus X. That's the cost per unit or the cost each. So we have to also multiply this times the number of units that we create. So the cost function is the cost per unit times the number of units. Thus the profit function now is the revenue function minus the cost function, making sure you put the entire cost function in parentheses so you distribute the negative, and let's simplify. So the profit function is 120x minus x squared. But that is not what the problem asked us for. It asked us for the marginal profit function. That's a very simple derivative that we now take, and we get 120 minus 2x. And now we have the answer we're looking for. Let's look at a graph and see what this graph can tell us. If 100 units are produced and sold, will the 101st item increase or decrease the profit? So we're looking here about 100. We're right at this point of the graph, and we're trying to figure out the next item we sell, will that increase or decrease the profit? A good thing to do here is to think about what this means in terms of an equation, okay? <clears throat> Note the question is asking if the marginal profit at 100 units is positive, positive pos excuse me, profits will increase, or if it's negative, the profits will decrease. If the derivative, uh, since we know that the derivative of the profit is the derivative of the revenue minus the derivative of the cost, then profits increase if the revenue is greater, if the derivative of the revenue or the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. Now think about this function. I'm not talking so much about numbers, although certainly we are. We're talking about the picture. How do I know if the marginal revenue for the, the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost? Remember these are derivatives and these are slopes. So the steeper the slope, the larger the number. So here at 101, notice that the slope of the revenue is steeper than the slope of the cost function. So the revenue is growing faster than the cost function is, okay? Going back to the same formula up here, we would know that the profits will decrease if the, if the slope of the revenue function is less or is not as steep as the slope of the cost function or that the derivative of R is less than the derivative of C. Since the slope 
of r is steeper at 100 than the slope of the cost function, then r prime x is greater than c prime x, so the profits are increasing. Now this is confusing, I think, to most people because you can still see that we're not making a profit. The costs are actually larger than the revenue. The cost graph is above and the um, yes, and the revenue graph is below. So we're not making a profit. So how can our profits increase? Interesting. Notice that since the cost is above, uh, the profits are negative, which represents a loss. But as indicated, the profit is still increasing, which is actually being experienced as a decrease in loss. So we're getting closer and closer to our break even and then ultimately to making money. Okay, so even though our, uh, a decrease in loss, that's still an increase in profit. Because our, think about it if you were overdrawn in your checking account, let's say $100, and you put $50 in there. You still have a negative balance, but you're getting closer. You're getting better. Okay, let's look at a couple problems. Will the next item increase or decrease profit at 300 units and at 1,000 units? Here we're going to do the same thing. We're asking about what's happening with the slopes. Notice again at 300, the slope of the revenue function is still steeper than the slope of the cost function. So here the profits are still going to increase. The profits are going to increase faster. However, notice when we get to 1,000, the cost function is getting steeper and the revenue function is starting to level out. So here the profits are going to decrease. And really this is bad language. What we should say is the change in profits is increasing. The rate of change of profits is increasing. The rate of change of profits is decreasing, not the overall amount.